the topic is muscle general features of general anatomy so in this topic we cover the competency muscle tissue account structure and action the muscle in latin means little mouse moving beneath the skin muscle is present in the heart and other internal organs the function of the muscle is contraction there are three types of muscles differentiated by their cell structure location and how they are stimulated you can see in the picture the skeletal muscle the skeletal muscle is attached to the skeleton that is bones its muscle fibers are large long and they have peripheral peripherally located and it is multinucleated muscle fibers can measure up to 30 cm in length as you can see in the picture it is striated muscle and by action it is voluntary muscle the skeletal muscle will tire and it needs rest after short periods of work so coming to skeletal muscle fiber each muscle fiber is enclosed in facial sheath called as endomysium several such ensheathed muscle fibers are in turn wrapped in another fibrous membrane called as perimysium a bundle of muscle fibers is called as fascicle many muscle fascicles are in turn trapped in epimysium the extreme ends of epimysium continue beyond the muscle to form a cord like structure called tendon and sometimes it is flat the which is called as eponeurosis the tendon is usually attached to the bone whereas the eponeurosis is attached to the connective tissue or attached by connective tissue coming to tendon tendon anchors the muscle to bone tendon is durable and the conserve space it contains tough collagen fibers the relative size is smaller which allows them to cross over the tendons many muscles in our body are spindle shaped with a fleshy belly in the middle and tapering ends at the ends called as tendons we come to smooth muscle it has no striations it is an involuntary muscle it is present in the walls of internal organs such as stomach urinary bladder the smooth muscle fibers are spindle shaped they are uni uninucleate they are arranged in two layers the inner is circular and the outer is longitudinal and uh, their contractions help in emptying the contents of internal organs and its action is slow and sustained cardiac muscle it is present only in the heart it is striated uninucleate and involuntary cardiac muscle fibers are branched they join by special gap junctions called as intercalated disc cardiac muscle contraction occurs at a fixed space then we go to parts of skeletal muscle and differentiate between tendon and eponeurosis different parts of skeletal muscle are origin insertion and the middle portion origin is the fixed end of skeletal muscle 
and usually proximal in position insertion is the distal moving end of the skeletal muscle but sometimes the term origin and insertion are interchanging example latissimus dorsi action during climbing and the intercostal muscles it is difficult to define the ends middle portion of skeletal muscle is the flesh belly fleshy belly fleshy belly is contractile whereas the ends are non contractile and elastic coming to differentiation between tendons and epineurosis epimysium provides cover to the muscle example the triceps and biceps brachii distal ends of the epimysium covering the skeletal muscle extends beyond the muscle belly to form a cord like structure called tendon or a sheet like flat attachment called as epineurosis muscle insertion is usually to a bone epineurosis of the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall join between them and forms linea alba linea alba is the insertion of three abdominal muscles you can see in the picture linea alba they are durable tendon anchors the muscle to the bone they are durable and they conserve space their relative smaller size allows them to cross over the joints then we come to shunt and spurt muscles that is another competency the term shunt refers to the force of muscle contraction which is transmitted along the bone in the direction of joint mode whereas the term spurt refers to muscle force which pulls the bone in a curved path shunt muscles direct their force along the bone spurt muscles direct their force across the bone so you can see in the picture the difference spurt muscles are rotators their origin is away from the joint and insertion is near the joint of action the examples are biceps brachii and its insertion to radial tuberosity triceps insertion into the olecranian process so these are spurt muscles shunt muscles are stabilizers their origin is near the joint and the insertion is away from the joint the example is brachioradialis muscle with its action extension of elbow and is inserted into distal end of radius proximal to stylet process thank you